What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here in person on the live stream with an update video on this Monday, March 20th, 2023. It's about 10:17 p.m. here along the West Coast in California, where we're expecting uh, quite a bit of more, quite a bit more rainfall tomorrow. Never-ending winter, but that's okay with me. 1.9, the latest earthquake here along the California coast. Also, a 4.8 earthquake here coming into our major watch zone. That's the Kurokamachaka Trench. Let's go ahead and check out the activity here across the region. Uh, there is that four-pointer. Looks like USGS downgrading that slightly to a uh, 4.7, 69 kilometers deep over the last week. That puts... Uh, Still a small amount of earthquake activity out here along the Kurokamachaka Trench. I've been watching this area for quite some time. Uh, I would say it's definitely overdue in terms of some larger scale movement in certain segments here of the Kurokamachaka Trench. We'll continue to watch that. A little bit of activity south of here as well. Uh, looks like um, one down in Taiwan. That was a 5.2. Prior to that, a couple other smaller quakes around Tokyo and the Izu Trench, all showing slight uptick here along the northwest corner of the Pacific Plate and the western Philippine Plate there. Uh, looking at the EMSC model here, we're not looking at, uh, well, we're not looking at too much in terms of swarming out here along the uh, Philippine Trench or the Maluka Sea region. Just some light earthquake activity out here uh, over the last 24 hours. You know, it's, this area has been swarming off and on. A temporary pause in that swarming activity so we'll continue to watch other areas around the Pacific plate and adjacent plates over here uh, for some movement <coughs> excuse me still a little under the weather I don't know where it came from I don't know what it is start out uh, kind of just like a little burning in my nasal cavities and uh, it's kind of got a fever going right now I'm trying to get that toned down 4.4 uh, Papua New Guinea area some other movement down into New Zealand. Let's see what's going on down here across the area. <clears throat> we did have a 4.1 in that swarm area this morning. So let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers here. Um, see if there's any more news articles put out in regards to that earthquake swarm. Doesn't look like it aside from that one two days ago. So for earthquake activity across the New Zealand region, this includes all magnitudes uh, our swarming area has mostly been confined up here to the uh, northern segment here, just south of the Bay of Plenty uh, within this area, right? Uh, let me show you guys right here. And uh, there's still some, definitely still showing some earthquake uh, activity out there as far as the swarming goes. Some twos here within the last hour. Twos appear to be the magic number. Quite a few twos here uh, in the last couple hours. And it looks as though that is where it's confined here. Most of the activity I'm seeing here on the map, except for this 3.8 up along the Kermadec Trench. Uh, that one, somewhat of a deeper quake, 252 kilometers deep there. Uh, aside from that, most of the activity definitely showing up there across the um, this Carawera volcano area. Let me see what we got here for the volcanic drums. This one's still offline. This is the one I was kind of monitoring here. The uh, Mount Tarawera, I believe that's correct. Hopefully that is. I forgot to check out the um, the correct pronunciation there. But hey, um, yeah, whatever's going on with this station, it looks like it's offline. Unfortunately, that was the uh, one of the main station I was watching there for earthquake activity. Uh, let me see what we got here for earthquake drums in that area. This will also give us a good indicator of what's going on. There is that... Um, well, it kind of looks like there was somewhat of a, I think that's that three-pointer that kicked up here a couple hours ago. A few hours ago, I should say. Uh, more noticeable, it looks like. Most not notably, it looks like on this station here. Um, far as some of the smaller microquakes go. But definitely, it looks like it's still uh, kicking up there in New Zealand, North Island, far as the earthquake activity goes. I don't see any major swarms down south. Things look somewhat clear for that area for now. But again, we'll continue to watch that. Uh, into the big island of Hawaii. Got, uh, well, eight earthquakes. Not that big of a deal. Mostly twos and uh, even a three out there around the Pahala area. A little bit of movement up here on the north or on the eastern flank here of Mauna Loa. I don't think we've seen any changes here as uh, far as 
the uh, volcano hazards go on the big island, but uh, we'll double check and make sure. Kilauea uh, daily update is put out today, it looks like. Currently not erupting. Uh, looks like they're, the pause continues. It has been here for a week or so now, a couple weeks. Um, just kind of waiting on it, seeing what happens. There's no unusual activity been been uh, noted there across the rift zones. Steady rates of ground deformation and seismicity continue along with uh, along both. Measurements from continuous gas monitoring stations downwind um, have been below detection limits for SO2. So, uh, yeah, just kind of watching that, seeing how it uh, plays out. But for now, Kilauea Volcano and Mauna Loa uh, in a restful state. Up into the Aleutian Trench area, 4.9. This one pretty deep here, 211 kilometers deep with this type of activity. Watch the subsequent shallower movement here up along the Aleutian Trench here for some uh, further movement. That one coming in just earlier this afternoon, so it may pop up overnight or tomorrow morning, but uh, watch this area here uh, for some subsequent earthquake activity. The swarm around the uh, Tanaga and the Takawanga volcano up here into the uh, Lucian Trench area remains uh, active, but uh, nothing, no changes, so to take note of. Uh, a little bit of swarming out here as well by uh, this volcano. This getting pretty active up north here, it looks like. Uh, what do we got here for earthquake activity? Let me check the last seven days. Yeah, most of it kind of looks like it's kicking up here today. Uh, 19 earthquakes or so. You can see that beautiful feature of a volcano up here. Let me check the um, AVO up here real quick and see what we have going on. Um, as far as earthquake activity goes. Let's see here. It doesn't look like there's anything changed as uh, far as any updated activity. Of course, the earthquake swarm, earthquake activity has been uh, frequent at uh, numerous volcanoes up here, including this one. Uh, so we'll kind of watch it and see how it plays out. Trident volcano over here as well, a little active. All right, uh, Pacific Northwest. Goodness, what do we got going on up here? little bit of activity outside of Seattle and the Tacoma region. Nothing big, but uh, little ones out there. Some deep, some shallow. A uh, little bit of uptick kicking up here into the state of Washington. Also much further east uh, into this area. A little point four at uh, negative 0 0.4. Uh, down here around the Mount St. Helens area, a little small microquake activity. Uh, state of Oregon looks fairly quiet. We did have one earthquake here off the coast of Northern California. This is the Gorda Ridges out here just shy of the Cascadia Megathrust. That was from this morning, that little uh, 2.8. A little bit of activity out here around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field and the northern end here of the San Andreas Fault. Although nothing uh, major popping up, just a slight uh, elevated activity there in the microquake department. 1.2 in Oakland, Oaktown there, California, 9.1 kilometers for a 1.2. Uh, also here on the San Andreas Fault, just outside of San Francisco Zoo, 1.2 coming in. That was last night. Uh, a little bit of activity here along the creeping segment once again. Uh, definitely a slight noticeable uptick across the California area today and uh, more noticeable this evening. Uh, with some swarming out here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone and some activity across the L.A. jungle here. Uh, mostly some small microquakes. Uh, but some of this activity is relatively deep into the area. 29 kilometers for this 1.5. So a little bit of movement taking place here across the L.A. basin area. All right, further east, not a whole lot going on there into the Intermountain West areas. Uh, Yellowstone, not a whole lot of activity. It looks like a 0.1. I'm sure there's more earthquakes out there than that. But uh, hey, let's go ahead and check it out. See what we got for the Yellowstone seismographs. They're a little on the slow side. Eh, not a whole lot. Uh, just a couple small microquakes out here. And uh, yeah, definitely nothing to write home about there in that aspect. All right, see what else we have here. Across the Middle America Trench south here. Off the coast of Costa Rica, 
They did have a 5.5 coming in earlier this evening. Uh, this earthquake coming in 35 kilometers deep. A little bit of movement also uh, looks like late last night upstream with that 4.4 off the coast of Nicaragua area. All right, South America got some movement here into the Chile region this morning. 4.7 and a 4.3. See if we got any smaller quakes out here. Oh yeah, there's a... There's a good handful of smaller quakes, I would say, across the South America region from north to south, it looks like. Quite a few twos down here along the Peru Chile Trench and up north here as well, all within that subduction zone area. Continue to watch that for uh, some possible further movement. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Look at that super deep, deep earthquake. Uh, that one's 592 kilometers deep. Did we catch that or did we miss it? Here into the Philippine Trench. Goodness, 4.5 this afternoon. Stuff like this is something you want to pay attention to. Uh, these deeper quakes here mean something's uh, stress definitely upstream uh, in order to get that type of earthquake activity well below the surface. Uh, that means uh, you may want to watch the Philippines area. I know this area has been active in terms of swarming and uh, it, just in general earthquake activity out here along the Philippine Trench. This is the last 30 days of movement. We did have that 6.3. Uh, back in February, 110 kilometers deep. But this one here, goodness, that's about the deepest one I've seen around the Philippine Trench in quite a while. So be on guard. Uh, not a whole lot through the Java Trench area. Uh, let's see what we got here. One earthquake, 3.2. Quiet across the Myanmar area, northern India, Himalayas, uh, until you get over here around Turkey and the uh, Romania area. Looks like uh, can, yeah, a little bit of activity kicking up there and also down south here uh, into the area around Greece. One 4.5, but there's some other adjustment going on down there in the smaller magnitude department. South Sandwich Trench here did have a 5.1. 133 kilometers deep here into the northern end of that subduction zone. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here. Let me check the trimmer. We haven't checked trimmer out, so let's go ahead and see what's going on here with the trimmer. Woohoo! Big number, right? Nah, not really. 15 epicenters of trimmer. It's been awfully quiet here for a little while. Notice this downtrend uh, in the trimmer department. Uh, mostly. Uh, I would, well, let me see what we got here over the past, since about January 17th, uh, 5,789 5, epicenters since the uh, first 17th, uh, January 17th of this year, uh, which is uh, it's somewhat average for a couple months time span here, mostly in Northern California, Southern Oregon, so... Uh, but overall, I'd say the past, it looks like back in the end of February here, things just went awfully quiet here across the Cascadia. That will increase, no doubt, as uh, time goes on. All right, uh, space weather activity here. Double check, make sure we got the latest info from the solarham.net website. Shows a massive coronal hole, number 86, now in position of the Earth view and uh gonna watch out here in the coming days around the 23rd 24th we should see a little bit of amplification to the uh the auroras uh, once those high speed particles arrive not for sure what's going on up here <coughs> excuse me uh with the data looks like when you click on it, it works but uh, for whatever reason oh no that one's not working well let's see what we got here for the sunspot activity a uh, massive region of sunspot activity here on the southeastern limb and the northeastern up here. Um, we'll watch these definitely in the coming days here for some uh, further development in terms of flaring threat. Right now, a 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25% chance, X flare around 5 or so. Uh, nothing changes, or n nothing noted here across the three day far as changes go. The Aurora forecast looks awfully minimal for now. Not a whole lot uh, expected. 
Uh, there was a pair of coronal mass ejections leaving the sun. Looks like uh, nearly the same time today. Uh, looks like a couple different filament eruptions. One on the northeast quadrant. Uh, second one uh, was on the southwestern limit, looks like, directed away from the planet. Pretty nice looking. But uh, hard to say if any of this is going to be in the Earth-directed view. We've been pretty lucky here with these massive CMEs. They've, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, hard to compare. But sometimes, you know, it's going to be one of these times where we're perfectly in position and we're going to get hit with a very powerful CME that could uh, cause dr disruptions down the road as uh, far as our communication systems and whatnot go. Just a matter of time. You know, like anything else, you know, just a matter of time before the uh, San Andreas Fault goes or the Cascadia. We've been pretty fortunate here with uh, volcanoes, you know, no no major super eruptions. Uh, but eventually, eventually that will definitely change. All right, um, let's see what else here. I'm trying to make it through this update here. Can't breathe out of my nose, but goodness, it's a weird one. All right, weather forecast here for tomorrow. We have the West Coast getting socked again by this uh, low pressure system, developing low pressure system, actually. I wouldn't call this quite a bomb cyclone, but it does have some good low pressure uh, gradients there parked right over the Bay Area, bringing in substantial moisture here uh, into the Sacramento Valley and some uh, higher elevation snow uh, before it completely just disappears. Look at that. <laughs> California just completely squashed it. Um, so, yeah, not much left after it hits uh, inland there along the California coast. After that, we do have another clipper of a cold system up north here. Uh, Northern California getting in on some rain and snow. Behind that, uh, we drop. Look at those temperatures just come down straight out of, or the uh, snow come down straight out of the north. That's a much colder system here. Uh, bringing in some low elevation snow to Oregon, um, probably up around Eugene, Grants Pass area, getting some snow. And Northern California as, as well. Um, that looks like that comes down. Um, and after that, uh, well, another warmer system. So it's a mix of cold and wind. It kind of looks like a hurricane right there. Look at that. Nice little low pressure system there off the California coast towards the last couple days of March. Again, bringing in some heavy rainfall and some heavy-duty snowfall up at the higher elevations. After that, well, this was different last night. So these long-range models here are kind of hard to, um, you know, believe. But uh, kind of gives us a general indication of what to expect. Uh, either way, it looks like we do have a couple more storm systems here in the forecast to bring some much more uh, rainfall and snow out here to the California area. All right, uh, I think that's about it, folks. Nothing, uh, nothing major happening out here. Haven't really seen any major changes to any volcanoes across the typical monitored ones. There's always active volcanoes out here, but uh, as far as you know, our our volcanoes out here along the west coast and Alaska looks about the same as they have been for a while. Eventually, that will change. Been pretty quiet here. All right, folks, I'm going to bounce out of here and probably call it a night and get some much needed sleep after some medicine here that hopefully Missy Mimi's will fix up for me so I can uh, sleep and get back to normal tomorrow, I suppose. Been like this for a couple days. Look at that adjustment taking place here um, upstream of that deep earthquake activity. Definitely got to watch this area uh, for some possible larger scale movement. That deep earthquake activity into the Philippine Trench will strain upstream areas. We're already seeing a little bit of adjustment, looks like, with that 4.5 coming in right now uh, as we speak. So just a heads up. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime. Tuesday already. A couple more days and then uh, well, a few more days and then it will be Friday. Have a good one. Take care, folks.